All right, ladies and gents, FN 509, and it's tactical because it's got a threaded barrel. So it's tactical as shit. Um, and uh, that is on the, uh, I don't want to say chopping block because that makes it sound like it's going to be, I got to come up with a thing. Like it's on the, I say hot seat, but that doesn't really make sense. I don't know. I'm going to come up with something, everyone. But right now, try block hot seat, whatever you want to call it. But today, uh, 509 tactical. Um, before we jump into everything, uh, let's hit a little housekeeping, which would be, as my staff and uh, fellow amigos back here say, uh, like and subscribe and do all the things that a good YouTube uh, subscriber would do. Um, and if you need us on the real estate side, support us. Just send us a message for those of you who don't know and you're like, why the fuck is he talking about real estate in a gun video? Yeah, 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 I get it. Like basically our real estate company, we deal with a lot of like military law enforcement clientele, shooters, hunters, outdoorsmen, stuff like that. Based in Utah, operate all over the place. If you need anything, send us a message. You can go to 1911syndicate.com. You can message us through there. We'll see it and we'll respond to you. Done. All right, the uh, 509 Tactical, this is not my gun and it was not sent to me by FN. Uh, a local buddy had a couple requests if i remember right come through like oh you should <coughs> you ever have one of those where and it just <coughs> it just gets you out of nowhere um but i think it was a couple requests that came through because we were doing comparisons between glock 19s mps 320s and just trying to kind of go down the polymer uh gun list there and go hey pros and cons of each uh you know see if there's a winner inside of this and the 509 tactical came up a couple times so we said oh we'll see if we can get our hands one fortunately had a local buddy he had one hit him up he said sure you can borrow it don't break it i don't think we've broken anything today um and yeah so that's where the gun came from just uh real simple i guess let's talk about what the hell's going on with this gun okay i feel uninspired on this one that's how i feel I feel uninspired I don't want to be inspired. I do. Okay, let's do this shit. Do it for America. Do it for the gram. Do it for all the IG hoes. All right. Um, so the 509. Let's talk a little bit about this thing. Um, first things first. So MSRP on the gun, one thousand and fifty dollars, and it's more than your average polymer pistol uh, by quite a bit. By you know four to yeah you know 400 ish bucks it's it's about above the norm but um yeah it's almost a weird price you know it's almost a weird price where you're like what other polymer guns like you know a colt 1911 or something like that you go yeah you know there's usually thousand dollar guns don't quote me on that but like polymer guns what polymer guns are a thousand bucks or a little over i don't know and i think we'll probably circle back to that as we go um this one's chambered in nine mil, obviously. So it comes with uh, two magazines. It comes with a 17 round mag. So this grip right here, okay, is uh, for a, it's gonna be about the same as a Glock 17, really. Um, 17 round mag. And it also comes with a ginormous 24 round mag. Um, it does fit flush up against the, I wouldn't really call it a magwell. Magwell would be a little generous in my opinion, but it does fit right up against that. And if you want it to look different, you can just slide that bad boy off. I don't know why you would do that because it's marked with the number 24, um, but so is the mag. I don't know, whatever, dude, you do you. Long mag, short mag, you do your thing. So 17 to 24 round capacity. In all fairness, you know, like, I don't know, the 24 almost seems a little unnecessary. It's almost like, look, I'd rather have two 17s and give me an option to go buy the big boy if I want an extra third mag that's more of a stick. Um, but that's just me, teach their own. Four and a half inch barrel, same as Glock 17. Um, so between the grip and the slide, really, you're looking at something that, Despite me looking at it and thinking that it looks way smaller than a Glock 17, it must just be an optical illusion. Uh, but it's the same size as a 17. It just, to me, looks a lot smaller. It looks to me like it's like a Glock 19, but it's not. It's just crazy, kids. It's just crazy because it looks like something and then it's not that. And you're just like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. It's 2020, man. Um, it's got a cold hammer forged barrel. Big fan. I, whenever I see a hot hammer forged barrel 
I send it back, okay? Cold hammer forged is, is the way that I roll. Uh, threaded barrel, and you know, look, that's what really makes it super tactical. So you can thread on uh, any of your cans that you so love. I was running a dead air ghost on that, just kind of plinking around, you know, just seeing how everything works with a can on it. Everything runs smooth there. Um, the grip angle. It's not as harsh uh, as a Glock. It's not as steep and it's not as nice as a 1911. It's kind of in this in-between zone. It's not, uh, you know, it, it's fine. It, it's fine. I actually don't have any issue with the, the grip angle. I like how on both sides of the grip, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's going to be tough for you to see, but it basically thins in a little bit like it, it you know it's it's going and then it kind of sucks in a little bit right here right and uh it's nice for your hand no matter if you're a lefty or a righty because it just kind of molds and that way your thumb can hang out in this little zone right here that's stippled the grip itself um pro pro and a con of it i think the the uh the pro of it is i'm fine with it it like in terms of the actual texture itself it's fine you know, it's it's nice. It's it's grippy. Uh, I don't really have any any cons that I can give you in terms of the actual grip texture itself. The only real con I think would be, I don't really know if it's gonna like how it's gonna do if you wanted to stipple it. If you're like, hey, cool and all, FN, but like I'm gonna get my local gunsmith or I'm gonna go to YouTube University and stipple it myself. I don't really know how that grip's gonna do with it. You know, I'm not saying it won't stipple okay. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying smarter minds than me are gonna have to chime in on that but it might be something to take note of if you're planning to buy this and have it uh, uh, stippled. It's got some different back straps. I just left what came on it. Feels fine, doesn't feel you know weird or anything, so let it be. Um, note to everyone, the uh, Leopold uh, Delta Point Pro does not come with the gun. Uh, this is not a review on this optic. I will tell you the optic to me is very odd, and the reason I say that, having spent pretty little time with it is primarily due to the fact that I have one power button that goes up and down on the brightness, which I'm not a fan of that system. If Leopold, you know, if they really value my opinion, just know, hey, Jake's not a fan of it, okay? So re re redo all of your R&D. But I don't like it because it controls up and down. And you just have to cycle all the way down to go all the way back up. And it's just this loop. It's goofy. It's weird. Um, and I hate the fact that it's right in the middle. So basically, if you make an adjustment and I push this, well, I push it right where the damn dot is. So then I got to move my finger to see, like, what happened. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just not into it, you know? Like, sorry, I'm just not into it. Um, but that's that. Optic does not come with the gun, obviously. So if you're like, well, it's 1050 but it includes a dot, so it's a good value. Eh, that's not, not quite... Uh, it does accept a variety of optics, though, so um, if you want to put on a, a Delta Point or an RMR, things like that, you do have uh, some choices in terms of what red dots you, you can put on. Uh, suppressor height, height sights come stock with the gun, which is nice because that's at least one upgrade that we don't have to do. Um, rear front serrations, you know. Let's take kind of note of three things that I do think are a little bit notable. So one would be so we have a full-time ambi uh mag magazine release okay so i can drop mags from this side which is typically how i do it as a lefty but at the same time i can drop them from this side the only issue that i've been having with the ergonomics of typically as a lefty um i should to be more efficient drop the mag on this side well the problem with that is you will see when I do that, well, the mag magazine release goes that way. Well, the problem is my hand's right there. So depending on how you ride your grip and just kind of the ergonomics of your hand, when I push that, you know what it's doing right now? It's not ejecting the mag because the mag release is pushing into the other side of my hand, which uh, leads me to a point that I've made before, which is, hey, make shit ambidextrous, but let me choose which side it goes on. I'm capable of, I can make the choice. I can make the choice and that's what I want. I want to be in charge and I want to run the show and I don't want to be told it's going to work on both sides all the time because then it kind of sort of works on both sides, but not quite really. It's the same thing with the slide release. So you can drop it from here. You can drop it from here. Um, 
it's the same problem with that. So the pro and con of it. The pro is you go, hey, we made an ambi gun. It's like, ah, fucking awesome, man. You know, the con of that is because this is on both sides, it happened to me only once, so it's not a real consistent issue. But once today, I was shooting and I got a click instead of a bang. And no doubt that's because my grip was riding uh, high on this side of the gun and I overrode over, yeah, overrode the uh, slide stop. Okay, so just know that that's an issue versus if you said, hey, it's ambidextrous, pick which side of the gun you want it to be on. You go, perfect, I just put it on the side of the gun where I'm never gonna get any malfunctions versus this. And now that happens all the time on Glocks where uh, shooters override their slide stop and fortunately there's something like the, the Cogworks extended race slide release that gets you around that problem. And that's a very cool product. I can't imagine, maybe there is, okay, so don't quote me, but I can't imagine that the FN509 tactical market is big enough to have a raised extended slide release. Could be, don't know, didn't do that research, but that is a little bit of a, you know, you, you got a decent shot, you're gonna, because it extends out, you've got a decent shot, you're gonna override that slide stop. So both the mag release and the slide stop, they are a little bit of an issue for me. Probably the biggest um, issue that I've got with the gun is, the trigger is atrocious. Uh, it's just not good, okay? It, I mean, it's just not good. I wonder if you can hear this in the mic. We'll see if the... You can hear the clunkiness of it, where it's like... And then you hit the wall, right? It's like that's the sound that the trigger makes before you get to that wall. That take up... That's the sound that it makes, okay? And if you could put your ear up to that trigger, that's the sound it would make. And it's crazy, right? It's like it knows English, but it's not a good trigger. The, the take up is horrifically bad and clunky. The wall itself, I mean, it's very defined. So there's that. And it's just, I mean, it's way more of like a combat trigger, duty trigger, where it's just, it's a bit heavy. It's a bit stiff very distinct break and then the uh reset there's just a lot of there's a lot of over travel on the reset that the like the trigger shit okay i think if we can really cut down and just kind of get to jake what are you trying to say i'm trying to say the trigger shit okay and if you buy this gun you, you you owe it to yourself to replace the trigger it might be accurate it might be a good duty trigger but man there got to be a way to clean that thing up because that thing is no bueno okay sorry fn if this is your first time on this channel it's just how it goes sometimes nothing but love you know that's what will smith says so you know it's true um so in terms of like look my opinion on the gun uh, it's one of those guns where um you ever occasionally shoot something and you just go i don't really know i don't like i don't know i don't know what i think of it and that's kind of where i'm at right now i'm like i don't know like i you know i don't love it i don't hate it i just all right like it you know it's it's, it's uh, my best explanation for how i can describe the 509 tactical use all right like you know it, it i would be a lot more excited about it if it was six to seven hundred bucks i gotta tell you for a thousand and fifty i feel like we are stretching here because you can't blame it on the threaded barrel you can't be like well it's an extra 400 bucks so it's got a threaded barrel you know an mos glock uh 17 or 19 what you're gonna look at maybe 650 out out the door you know so it's probably 600 give or take a couple bucks you're looking at maybe 650 out the door so you're like okay msrp you know you're let's just say four to 450 bucks higher on this same capacity uh, uh the trigger on a glock versus this f 509 uh i gotta tell you i'd probably take a glock trigger and I don't know if anyone's ever said that. I don't know if anyone's ever said that. I would take a stock Glock trigger, trigger over XYZ. I've never heard it. I've never heard it. Um, so I don't know. I guess I'm trying to see like, okay, it will take a red dot and it's got a threaded barrel. Is that worth an extra like four to 450 over an, an, an MMP, a Glock? A, hell a sig 320 you know like is it worth the extra cash for something i'm trying to think of where is the value okay it takes a light yeah so does everything else like you know it's it, ambi okay yeah so is the other shit now you know i'm just i'm trying to i don't hate the gun i can't get to why it cost a thousand and fifty bucks so 
in the list of unhelpful videos that we probably put out, this is going to be towards the top of the list because I both don't have any tremendous opinion one way or another. The, the only real things I feel strongly about, don't love the Ambi stuff, don't love the trigger, and I feel like the price, I, I'm very much having a hard time getting to why it's justified. The gun itself, I'm fairly neutral on. All guns have pros and cons, but man, for the money, I, I'm, I'm, I'm riding the struggle bus a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So um, I don't know. It's your stimulus check. Do whatever you want with it. Trump sent it to you, right? I don't fucking go. You could take your 12 hundo, right? You could go get 500 rounds of nine millimeter for 1200 bucks right now. So that's the good news. You go get half of a case of nine mil, right? Or you could go to gun broker. Uh, gun broker is probably like 200. You get like 200 rounds for 1200 bucks right now. But like I said, it's your money. You do whatever you want with it. If you're balling and you're like, I just need more FDE shit in my life. Ah, fuck it. 509 tactical, right? So, all right, kids, uh, it's been real. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if we lost you as a subscriber because of this, sorry. Um, and if we didn't, we'll see you in a couple days.